Research and innovation in Futuris. You wait and you wait and then three come along at once, so the old joke about buses goes. But the bus has been getting a makeover. Half of public transport in Europe is buses. This takes us from the centre, just 50 minutes. But buses are still widely considered as the least efficient and least attractive transport system. Sometimes people get sick from riding with their backs forward. It's impossible to travel when buses are packed and dirty. So our idea was to bring about the renaissance of the bus. There's a brand new number 16 bus running on one of the busiest routes in Gothenburg. It's intended to rekindle a love affair between Europeans and their buses. And the magic bus has a few tricks built in to give passengers 20% more space. Yes, this is a new developed bus we have. And uh, for, to start with, we have uh, these new two wider doors together. And that's to get better flow of passengers. We have also these uh, foldable seats that you can see here. And uh, we have 15 of them. And uh, during the peak hours, the driver can lock them in, in the upright position. We have uh, put the driver in the center between the wheels, the front wheels, and we move the front wheels forward. And here in the back, we have uh, the new bellows that are transparent, and by that, we get in more light into the to this area because usually this area is very dark. It's the final prototype of a European Union research project aimed at developing quieter, cleaner and more user-friendly buses. Looks very modern, very nice. It's very quiet, which I like. And uh, I guess it's a good thing with all these seats being flexible. It could uh, fit more people in here. It's space. easier <laughs> entering, and it's a free space here. And the drivers have their opinions too. You have different um, reference points. As a driver, are situated in the centre, and on the, all the other buses on the left. Which means that if you use your old bus driver brain and drive this bus, you're at least a metre to far to the left. Uh, one thing is the communication with the passengers, since you're, you're uh, almost walled off in here. That's uh, not a too big problem, but can be sometimes. Researchers used complex mathematical models to calculate passenger flows and accessibility with various layout designs at different times and stations for bus routes all over Europe. We want to investigate these conceptual changes in the, of the bus layout uh, and we want to study how these conceptual changes affect uh, the performance of the bus uh, in terms of dwell time, capacity, accessibility. They tested these and other theoretical models with a life-size mock-up made of wood. That wooden bus was built out of modules, so we could change different aspect, design aspects of the bus, like uh, we could have a new front, we could have uh, another type of seats, or we could change the number of doors of the bus. And then we could see how those changes affected the passenger flow uh, on and off, and where do people choose to stand and sit, and so on.
At the same time, scientists near Paris were developing a new all-in-one computer system that brings together the vehicle's information technology features. Drivers can control all the onboard electronics from a small screen, including GPS, real-time traffic information, energy consumption, ticketing, and even counting the passengers. For a constructor of vehicles, this architecture will permit us to provide. For a bus builder, this architecture will allow us to supply vehicles that are ready to receive this system. For the transport operators, this architecture will make it easier to install and maintain information systems. The maintenance of the system of information. And for the public transport passenger, this architecture will allow us to supply a multi-mode service, continuous travel information from the start of the journey to the end. In Dresden, researchers on ergonomics used a bus simulator to pinpoint the needs and priorities of European drivers. They studied two different scenarios, the more ordered streets of Dresden and the more chaotic streets of Rome. Professional drivers gave their feedback to help design their ideal cabin layout. The overall structure is well thought out. I can easily reach the controls now without having to lean forward. I love an analog speedometer instead of a digital one. And I like to have some storage space from my bag and to keep some water bottles. They looked at space, adjustability, comfort and visibility. And the research helped unveil some distinct differences between the priorities of bus drivers in northern and southern Europe. They assess some things quite differently in Rome and Dresden. Drivers in Rome, for example, are more concerned about security. They're not very taken with the driver's position that's open to the public. For Dresden drivers, the main thing was storage space. That's what they commented on most. But that wasn't at all a priority for the drivers in Rome. The road ahead for the researchers is now about installing the newly developed design layouts in more fuel-efficient buses with far more highly developed computer systems. And they say they're not short of new ideas. In 20 years, we will have autobus modular that can be connected in 20 years, we will have modular buses that will be able to adapt themselves to the number of passengers that they will have to transport in a given time or place. In 20 years, we will also have buses whose state of health, the functioning of the motor, the doors, etc., will be completely remote controlled from a distant computer office. That will prevent a bus from breaking down in the middle of a street. The researchers say that for bus techno evolution to become fully efficient, there'll also have to be a new generation of urban infrastructure.